Shalom Kedeshim, welcome to this episode 070 today, with a little sidestep as to where we would have liked to have went. The news today is disturbing on so many levels, we are only going to look at the from a few of them, not as a doctor, but as a person that experiences life on a daily basis, of what we can make out of what we see today. This is why we have a question mark on the end of your title, News of Today. We feel it is subjective to how you would want to hear it. We know we cannot believe the news media of today and we have to filter about everything we hear, what is being said today and what is the real purpose of what is being said. It gets to be tricky. I thank God for his Ruach heart, Kodesh, his Holy Spirit for his guidance through all of this that gives our own human spirits and ear to hears and the ability to process this information of today for ourselves. Welcome to OBA, the Open Bible Association, town like it is, rebuilding the tabernacle of David that has fallen down. OBA, Open Bible Association is a Studio 772 production, broadcasting from our home in Grassroots USA. OBA, Open Bible Association, answering the hard questions and being a bridge over troubled water the troubled water of denominationalism and division, and just plain biblical ignorance, by sharing the truth of the Bible and its cultural and historical context, shining the light of understanding on a dark mundane post-Christian atheistic time, reminding people that God cares, and all things are possible with Him. Hallelujah, OBA, Open Bible Association is on the air with the good news of the gospel, shining the light on folks, letting them know they do not have to walk in darkness, breaking generational curses and bringing blessings to a dark and troubled world, letting people know the kingdom of God is in their grasp, teaching them how to reach out and take it by faith, Amen. OBA, Open Bible Association, shining the light on a sin-sick world, giving them the message of Yeshua, the message of hope. Hey, ask that guy what time it is. Yeah, you with a stack of Bibles in your hands. What time is it? Can you tell me what time it is? What time it is? It is Bible time. It's time to get out this Bible, open up the books, and start reading some scripture, and let the kingdom of God come into your soul. It's Bible time. Get all excited, folks. It's Bible time. Let's have some reading of the word. Opening the Scriptures We are going to read from this very beautiful book of Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. In our trio today of the King James Version KJV, God's Word to the Nations GW, and the Tree of Life Version TLV. Set back and enjoy this wonderful chapter that will help you deal with the news of today. KJV, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, of any comfort of love, of any fellowship of the Spirit, of any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, 
and being found in fashion, as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. G.W. So then, as Christians, do you have any encouragement? Do you have any comfort from love? Do you have any spiritual relationships? Do you have any sympathy and compassion? Then fill me with joy by having the same attitude and the same love, living in harmony and keeping one purpose in mind. Don't act out of selfish ambition or be conceited. Instead, humbly think of others as being better than yourselves. Don't be concerned only about your own interests, but also be concerned about the interests of others. Have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Although he was in the form of God and equal with God, he did not take advantage of this equality. Instead, he emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant, by becoming like other humans, by having a human appearance. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, death on a cross. This is why God has given him an exceptional honor, the name honored above all other names, so that at the name of Jesus everyone in heaven, on earth, and in the world below will kneel and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. TLV. Therefore if there is any encouragement in Messiah, if there is any comfort of love, if there is any fellowship of the Ruach, if there is any mercy and compassion, then make my joy complete by being of the same mind, having the same love, united in spirit, with one purpose. Do nothing out of selfishness or conceit, but with humility consider others as more important than yourselves, looking out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which also was in Messiah Yeshua, who, though existing in the form of God, did not consider being equal to God a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself taking on the form of a slave becoming the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason God highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Yeshua every knee should bow, in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and every tongue profess that Yeshua the Messiah is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah, OVA, Open Bible Association is on the air with the good news of the gospel, shining the light on folks, letting them know they do not have to walk in darkness, breaking generational curses, and bringing blessings to a dark and troubled world, letting people know the kingdom of God is in their grasp, teaching them how to reach out and take it by faith. Amen. OBA, Open Bible Association is on the air with the good news of the gospel, shining the light on folks, letting them know they do not have to walk in darkness, breaking the old curses, and bringing blessings to a dark and troubled world, letting people know the kingdom of God is in their grasp, teaching them how to reach out and take it by faith. Amen. OBA Open Bible Association, answering the hard questions and being a bridge over troubled water. The troubled water of denominationalism and division and just plain biblical ignorance. By sharing the truth of the Bible and its cultural and historical context, shining the light of understanding on a dark mundane post-Christian atheistic time, reminding people that God cares and all things are possible with Him. Hello folks, this is episode 070. Wow, I'm on my pathway to 100 episodes and this is a pretty good milestone to reach. But anyways, uh, I was thinking about, you know, the idea of where I wanted to go with this and series and what I did last week uh, with uh, 
episode 69 where I read that long commentary and I wanted to set up maybe the next three or four shows according to that. But it's going to be a little bit different that today because with the uh, quote unquote today's news, the crisis of the coronavirus that uh, is going on today. What exactly is that? Well, I'm kind of thinking that this was something more better than the Chinese could ever have expected whenever they put this into the way that they did. One is they used this virus over there with that Robbie Manuel thing of not letting a good opportunity go to waste to take the eyes off of China for its human rights violations and such in order to crush down the revolt that was going on where you had people carrying Trump signs in Hong Kong and such and you know just uh, really being anti-communist communist. and you think that well what's going on here well they wanted to crush that without getting the news media on so they used this virus in order to do it and you know we got little mixed things coming out of there like you know were they keeping people in their houses and causing them to starve to death or were they creating more of a problem than this virus actually created or are they you know, sending drones that were following people who weren't wearing masks and things like that and I, I don't know we had a lot of different things coming out of there and I don't think that all of them were true, and I don't think all of them was fake, but, you know, I, I just kind of like, well, I'm not even going to watch any of this stuff, because I don't know what it is, so basically is we seen like body bags, and they wasn't even really dead in there, and they was putting them in body bags, so did they create this? And I kind of believe that they did. In the way is the virus may have been natural. I don't think it was actually made in a lab or something, but it was used in a way. It was like an opportunity to crush this capitalist uh, Hong Kong rebellion that was going on there in that. Because, you know, it, it's a communist country. and. That's kind of the way that they do things. But then, you know, our news media kind of picks it up and takes it into different extremes because they got this anti-Trump thing going on here. And they take it in, make it worse than the any virus that's ever happened. Like, I think more people died of the swine flu than this. And from what I hear, there's 40 people that has died so far, but they've all been over 50. And the real people that are, you know, subject to be able to do this isn't young kids. It isn't young people. Young people are pretty well immune to this for, I think it would be reasons of their natural immunity is pretty well there. It's not been compromised as much by you know, artificial foods and bad habits that they've picked up over years and years and years. So the real dangerous people for this virus is people with, uh, you know, pre-existing conditions and such, like people with uh, diabetes and different immune uh, syndromes and stuff, people with, uh, you know, COPD. I mean, I, I can start naming a lot of things, but people at risk. And generally, they're going to be people, elderly people, who, you know, they've lived their life and they've kind of had their immune system compromised by different things that they've done and or not done. I mean, it could be pretty well just, you know, the age. I, I am not sure, but, you know, they're, they're living in kind of a dangerous way. But only 40 people have died with this. And I remember the swine flu epidemic and there was a lot of people that died with that we haven't even really hit that you know i was always this type of person which is another thing that um, you know i would not take a flu virus shot i just wouldn't do it i kind of boost up my system with vitamin c and garlic and things like that to boost up my natural immune system i do do that you know i went to the store yesterday went to walmart a lot of the vitamin C is gone, especially the high doses, like 1,000 units, there was some like 250 and a few 500s there. 
and I bought some just actually because I needed them. And then also, the way that my insurance works is I can get over-the-counter things, but they have to be Walmart brands and stuff, so you just can't get any over-the-counter stuff. And, you know, and, and that's fine. I mean, I've looked at it in that sense of the word, and I can see exactly where the things uh, you know, are going and such. And like me, I'm not in the best shape in the world. I walked through that store because I got one of those buggies that, you know, the electric carts and the battery ran dead on it so I just went and grabbed a regular one and started pushing it around the store. And I've spent two days on account of doing that because my foot hurts. I just can't wear a shoe on that foot where it's been operated on. And uh, I spent two days in that and I'm still suffering from the pain from that. I don't know, you know, why that, uh, I, I, I had to get the groceries, but the thing is, it's easier just to order groceries online and pay for them. But when you're just wanting a few things, like my coffee creamer, and uh, I wanted some bread and bologna. I mean, I, I didn't go there, to, you know, I usually get beef bologna and some cheese. I, I usually go through the store and get a, a, you know, just stuff for one meal like that. But if I want to buy groceries, I'll order them and then I'll go pick them up. I haven't had anything home delivered, but that, I guess that's a good option. But here's the thing is, I'm looking at this and I can't tell you if they didn't have toilet paper or any of that because I didn't walk through the house. Everything seemed to be pretty much there. But, you know, Tennessee is kind of a weird place anyway. I mean, like if they say it's going to snow. I don't know why you can go through a store and that store will have everything but milk and bread. So, I mean, it's just like people don't think that they may need something else other than milk and bread. You, you wouldn't be able to find milk and bread here. I don't know why, and I think that's more of a regional thing. When I lived in Ohio, it was never that case if they had storms that came through or whatever, uh, blizzards. <laughs> it would just be a lot of things that were short. It wouldn't be just milk and bread. But, you know, I I'm looking at this kind of stuff that's going on, and I think it's more politicalized in a way that it should be. And the fact is, is it overblown? Is this just another opportunity to get rid of President Trump? Well, maybe it is. I, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but just something doesn't seem right about this news today. It just doesn't seem right. I mean, we have a virus here, and I know that there's people that will say it's not real, it's not that. I believe it is real, but is it as deadly as they think? Now for me, uh, in my elderly compromised age, it would be deadly. But for my great-grandson, it wouldn't be deadly for him. He's just a few months old, and for my granddaughter, it wouldn't be deadly to her, and it wouldn't be deadly to you know, even my son. So I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm think, thinking there's something wrong with this because if this was such a dangerous disease, why is it that only the people that have died, which is sad that anybody died, whether it be one person, if, you know, they're all over 50 and that they all may have other problems and such. And so I'm, I'm looking at this as like something ain't right here. They're politicizing this in such a way that, you know, would, was this all just being a push as an opportunity to shut down the Trump rallies or to, you know, do some of the things that, uh, you know, they wanted to do to get money because we looked at the bills that they were trying to pass, which they wouldn't have been able to pass them in other ways. So then they start saying, well, Trump doesn't care or whatever. So, you know, what I really think that's going on here, which should scare everybody in the sense of more than just a virus, that if this can be used and weaponized, the fear weaponized of a virus, which we have viruses all the time. We have different strains. I mean, when I was talking about the, uh, the shots, the, uh, you know, antivirus shots that you can get, they would include the different types of virus strains that would come up, like the H1N1, you know, some shots were not for that, and then some were, and then they tried to adopt them to make them all both. And they even had, like, things for, like, pneumonia, where you could get a shot to keep you from getting pneumonia. Now, I, I really don't get into all that stuff. I have taken a few of those, but generally, I don't take them. I don't get these shots for 
antivirus. And what I'm saying is, or reason why, is because generally the people that take the shots get the viruses and the people that don't may or may not get it. So it's, it's this, it's, it's like, well, what is really going on? You know, in this year right now, it is uh, March the 13th, 2020, which it should be a good sight year, but it seems like the people are more blind this year at 2020 than they ever was in any previous year. And this is the sad thing because, you know, this is going to be probably the only uh, video I'll make about this, uh, you know, virus deal unless something really pops up that I see that I can't because I want to get back into my Bible. This is what this is all about. My videos are about the open Bible. But, you know, we have prophecies. I could even put this into Elijah's Corner because we have prophecies that talk about rumors and such like that and you know how that they can spread and do a lot more damage than the actual cause of disaster and such but the whole thing is it, it's it's telling me that we're living in a time where people would do about anything in order to promote a anti-god anti-god uh, promotion now you know i've looked at church history and Generally, church and state and all this other kind of stuff that we've had in times of past have been pro and con in actually doing things in a right manner. Sometimes we've had Hitler, and then sometimes we've had Cyrus. And so, you know, we've, we've had kings that were either pro-God or anti-God or, you know, putting some other God above uh, the God of heaven. And so in this day that we live in, in this uh, 2020 century or 2020 year or the 21st century, we have this going on in a way that's more anti-God in that sense of the word. So I am really hoping that this will be turned upside down and on its ear. I mean, that's the way that I'm going to be praying. And I'm hoping that that would be the way that the people that would listen to this is praying. You know, that two or three of you out there that listen to this broadcast would actually pray. And, you know, I would. these are things that I would want my children to know, my grandchildren to know. I love my grandchildren. I love my children. I mean, David and Becky are the greatest kids that ever was. My grandkids are, are great, too. And my great-grandkid, I haven't seen him yet, but I want to see him. And I got a feeling that he'll be, he'll be well too. I mean, I look at them and I am just busting out with joy that I see them. And I would not want anything to happen to them in any way, shape, or form. I mean, I could get on to this virus if it really did happen because people were eating bats and other things. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, one of the biggest killers that we have was the uh, swine flu, right? The, big virus that came from people eating swine and uh, or pigs and if they would have obeyed biblical kosher uh, that wouldn't have been that much of a problem I doubt if they would have got it but since the majority of people are anti-God and they think that his word is just something that they can take for granted and they don't even try to line up to it then you're gonna have things like that I mean there's no more detestable to eat swine than it is to eat a rat or a bat or you know I don't even know what you know you take the generally animals that you would cringe on and you know it's like well even some of them that you may not cringe on like if you've seen a squirrel people eat those and they're no different than a rat or whatever so you know Am I trying to impose something on to people that they don't want to do? No, this is all voluntary. And cause matter of fact is, it won't send you to hell if you eat a bat. It won't do that. But could you get the coronavirus if you did? Yeah. You could even get viruses and things from kosher animals. It's just uh, the way things are. I mean, it's it's just the way it is. But you risk, you take a less risk of you know doing things the less things that you do eat. We need things. We need protein and such like that. So we we do things to stay alive, to eat, 
and some of our food has been tainted by chemicals and not resting the land and doing things that maybe we shouldn't have done. Like, you know, even my grandpa, he was a farmer, he, he, he rested the land. They had patches and he didn't do it in a biblical manner, like for Israel where the whole land had to rest, but he, he took sections of it and he rested it. And that's the way that he farmed. And so, you know, um, he was, he, as a Baptist, he was doing a good job of trying to promote the biblical values that he understood them in the way that he understood them. So, which was good for the land. It was good for it to give it time to build back up the things in it that would, when you did plant food, that they would have the nutrients to them and they wouldn't be just empty things. And this is a problem with over, over farming land we end up with food that doesn't have the value that it should be having. So, I mean, a lot of this stuff is, and then that also by eating that year after year after year, people will, uh, they will limit their immune system to fight things because they haven't had the nutrients that they have to kept up their health in a way that it should have been kept up. So, uh, you know, I, I don't particularly know what the answers to all this stuff is. Um, as far as you know, what people should do or, or things like that. But, you know, in the long run is we're just pretty well subject to what goes on around us. If the, uh, if you go to the store and there isn't any items that you're looking for, like say toilet paper or stuff like that, the paper towels, whatever you can get. I mean, do what you have to do to survive. I'm, I'm not gonna tell anybody not to do that. But just think, man, and I, I've talked to people about this and it just went in one ear and out the other. I mean, we've had babies and women and men have gotten spoiled on diapers that you could throw them away, but this was never the way that you know, people had raised kids before. They did something with you know, cloth diapers and things like that. Well, how did they do that? Well, they actually you know, shucked the, uh, the waste out of them if possible and they kept a big jar of bleachy water and soaked them in it and then washed them. And they used them again. And they raised, you know, they used to be way big families of, you know, it wouldn't be untypical to have, you know, five kids in a family or six kids or eight kids or, you know, even high as like 13 kids and, you know, brothers and sisters and such. But so we have done things like that before and uh, maybe we got to return to some of those things but the whole thing is I kind of believe that people are smart enough to do the things that they need to do whenever they have to do them it's just that simple I mean we can make it way harder than it should be but you know sometimes some of these paths may be better anyway to go it's like you know we talked about growing your own garden and things like that well we do know that if you grow tomatoes, that I don't care who you are, you're going to grow the best tomatoes in the world. If you don't believe me, try it and then give me one and tell me what kind of tomato this is. Oh, this is the best tomato in the world, and I grew it. Well, I don't know if it was basically really any better than anybody else's, but because you grew it, it makes it taste better. It really does. And, you know, that, that's just a, a way of things. So. I'm going to end this episode with that, and I'm going to end it with a prayer. I'm going to say, Abba, Father, in the great name of Yeshua, we're going to honor you today, and we're going to ask you for your protection, your El Shaddai protection on us in this evil and wicked day, in this blind day, to give us the light and the ability to see what it is that we need to do that would be uplifting to you, and Father, we know that with your shalom, that that fear doesn't have a lot of hold on us because of your peace that passes all understanding. So we ask you for an extra dose of your shalom, of your peace today for this growing crisis that we have, that we can face this in a way that we need to face. Because, you know, like the world does with the every opportunity, uh, every crisis is an opportunity. We want to take an opportunity in this crisis to promote you and to promote your value and to spread your kingdom. Because this kingdom, no matter how good it is, 
or no, or no matter how bad it is, will pass away. But your kingdom will be forever. And you are the king. And you are the ruler. And so we thank you for that, Abba. And we ask you to send us the protecting angels that will protect us and that we would be able to do wisdom in the things that we do. We really don't care if they shut off all the you know, football games and basketball games because the majority of us don't really care about that stuff anyway. These are just worldly things that we don't particularly need. But what we need is you. And I do feel for those that are not having you know, church services and you know, religious services because you know, they don't want to get this virus. But maybe this will give them some time to get out of the spotlight and to get into the Bible and start reading it for themselves, and which is what we promote, and that they might gain some understanding that you might use the Holy Ghost to enlighten them on what it is that they're reading, and that they may see it in the light, the correct light, and that is the light of your word and the light of your spirit, that they may be able to understand what it is that they are reading. And in the name of Yeshua, we pray this prayer. Amen and amen. So I would like to say hallelujah, hallelujah. There is songs before I, I leave this, I leave you with this. There are songs and praises that are meant for God and God alone that He wants to hear from you. So you don't have the choir. You don't have anything else but you and God. And that makes it a majority. Because even in church, you, there is a unity and a fellowship among believers and stuff. But in all in all, this is going to depend upon you at this time with your personal relationship with God. And so I'm going to challenge you to to. I'm challenging you this day on this third of the third month of the year, 13th day of the year 2020, to improve that relationship and just start talking to God. Start talking to Him and start praising Him as if He is the only one in the world and build that relationship with Him. So in Yeshua's name again, Amen. We already gave you that prayer, so Amen. And thank you for listening. Shalom, hallelujah, OBA, Open Bible Association, building up your most holy Kodesh faith and giving you some time to escape the mundane and rest in the Ruach HaKodesh in the presence of Yehua and Yeshua, hallelujah and amen in the name of Yeshua our King, with blessings and love, be blessed. Shalom, hallelujah, we are so glad you was here with us in this episode, we hope that this program has been a blessing to you that we have given you some time to take your mind off this complicated mundane wicked world, and to take you to the sacred and Kodesh, kingdom of God, if only for this moment in time in the spirit the Ruach heart Kodesh, if you have any topics or concerns you can find our links to our positive solutions, feel no better Facebook page. Drop us a line there. Our link to all our endeavors can be found at our website, studio772.com. If we have been a blessing to you, give us a like and subscribe. We would love to hear from you. As always, thank you for listening. May the Almighty keep you, protect and guide you and give you shalom. Yeshua's peace that passes all understanding. We pray this prayer in Yeshua's authority. Amen. OBA Open Bible Association is a Studio 772 production, broadcasting from our home in Grassroots USA.